We're here at the Calaveras Dam replacement project site. This project's been in construction since 2011, and we expect to be complete in 2019, approximately seven and a half years of construction. Calaveras Dam, located on Alameda Creek, was constructed using a hydraulic fill method of construction starting in 1911. In 1918, when the dam was nearly completed at 220 feet high, the engineers noticed a tension crack on the upstream face of the dam. About 24 hours later, the entire upstream face of the dam failed into the reservoir. At that point, they took down about one third of the dam and cleaned up as much of the debris as possible. And then they reconstructed the dam using a more modern compacted fill method of construction. The problem is some of that loose material was left in the foundation. And so although the dam has served us well for over 90 years, it's well recognized now with our understanding of liquefaction that in a major earthquake on the Calaveras Fault located only 1,500 feet away from the dam, that we could get liquefaction in the foundation and have slumping of the crest of the dam of about 30 feet. With the reservoir at full pool, that could cause overtopping of the dam and eventually we could lose the dam as a result. And so in 2001, in cooperation with the California Division of Safety of Dams, we decided to restrict the reservoir level permanently to about 40% of capacity until such time that we either repaired the existing dam or replaced it entirely. And, and it was eventually decided that the best option was to replace the existing dam. And so we have to move approximately 10 million cubic yards of earth and rock. That includes excavation of the left abutment, the right abutment, the alluvial materials in the valley where the original creek ran, as well as excavations in the barrier areas for the clay at the south end of the reservoir and the hard rock materials that form the upstream shell of the dam. And so in total, we're excavating about 10 million cubic yards and we're constructing the dam with four million cubic yards of those materials. The others are put in disposal sites around the rim of the reservoir. Now, the original project was envisioned to be about a four-year construction project. But as the excavation in the left abutment started, the contractor started uncovering what appeared to be a geologic feature that could be associated with a slide. And after stopping the excavation for safety reasons for approximately four months and doing some additional geotechnical geologic investigations uh, in 2012, it was determined that there was actually two ancient landslides in the left abutment that were previously unknown. Now, part of the original geotechnical investigations included over 11,000 linear feet of core borings, dozens of test pits. Because this landslide was an ancient slide more than 20,000 years ago, there were no surface expressions of the slide, and so it wasn't until the contractor started excavating and uncovering the base of the slide where it was recognized that we needed to address this slide. We actually had to redesign the left abutment. It was originally a one-to-one -one cut overall. We had to lay it back to a two horizontal to one vertical cut, which increased the excavation volume by about three million cubic yards. So the existing dam is over here to my left. We've partially excavated it to make room for the upstream toe of the new dam. And the new dam is being constructed over here to my right. You can see it's a zoned earth fill dam. We have a hard upstream free draining rock fill shell. We have a gravel filter and a sand transition zone to the clay core. The clay is being mined from the south end of the reservoir, about three and a half miles away. And then we have a transition zone and a chimney drain on the downstream side of the core. And then the, the downstream shell is made from earth fill, which is a Tembler sandstone excavated from the left abutment. The contractor is working two shifts, 10 hours per shift, six days a week. During the day shift, the contractor concentrates mainly on the zone one core embankment, and then also importing material for the sand and gravel filters and drainage elements. On night shift, the work is primarily focused on the downstream and upstream shells. One of the reasons they work the night shift on the upstream material is uh, our hard rock on Calaveras is a NOAA containing material. It's a Franciscan formation and it contains naturally occurring asbestos. They require respirators and protective personal equipment, Tyvek 
So they do that work at night to minimize the amount of workers on site when they're placing the NOAA containing material. There's stockpiles of the Zone 4, the downstream shell material. That material is conveyed in. That reduces almost 400 truckloads per day coming in and out of the foundation, and it minimizes the vehicular traffic a lot, which helps tremendously with the safety on the project. This conveyor runs two shifts. It transports approximately 4,000 yards per shift for a total of approximately 8,000 cubic yards per day of the Zone 4 material. Essentially, the, all the zones, seven different zones across the dam, are placed essentially horizontally as the dam comes up one foot at a time. Currently, we're at, a, at about elevation 640 with the top elevation of the dam at about elevation 776. The spillway is constructed of actually a combination of mass concrete and structural concrete for the walls. It's 1,500 feet long, is on the left abutment. It's an ungated spillway that's rated to about 45,000 cubic feet per second in the probable maximum flow. This is an OG crested ungated spillway, so we have an L-shaped OG, uh, plan view of the spillway, uh, so the water can pour in in the upper spillway. Uh, we actually have a horizontal curve in the spillway uh, prior to the water gaining velocity through the middle portion of the spillway, and we get quite a bit steeper in the lower portion prior to dissipating the energy in the stilling basin. That's a Bureau of Reclamation Type 2 uh, stilling basin. So when the dam is complete, the crust of the new dam will actually come right up to the top of this gravity mass concrete wall. We are looking at the new intake tower for Calaveras Dam, the outlet works. This is the superstructure on top of the shaft that was excavated down to construct three adits and one drain tunnel to connect to the existing tower that was upstream of this location approximately 80 feet. The old tower has been demolished and backfilled with concrete. Part of the construction of this shaft, approximately 160 foot deep, involved excavation of a vertical shaft and mining the material, excavating, lifting out with cranes and bucket. And then at each level of the adit, the tunnels underground were reached. Horizontal tunneling operation, three adits and one drain were excavated and constructed back to the old existing intake tower. And then new piping installed to connect with the old outlet works piping at the old tower. And then the existing outlet works was extended by constructing a new outlet works conduit 78 inch steel pipe, reinforced concrete encased, which extends underneath the new dam that runs through and it connects into the city pipeline that runs to the Sonoma Valley Water Treatment Plant. And that's how the water is delivered to the users. This reservoir represents approximately 15% of the total SFPUC water supply and approximately 50% of the local reservoir supply for SFPUC. The significant drawdown is a major impact to the water supply, which brings on the replacement dam construction so this reservoir can be brought back into full service. 85% of the water comes from Hetch Hetchy Reservoir in the Sierra Nevada mountain range and travels 167 miles across the state to where uh, the users are in San Francisco and south of San Francisco and in the East Bay. So the Water System Improvement Program is a $4.8 billion program designed to repair, replace, and upgrade critical portions of San Francisco's regional water system that serves 2.7 million users in the San Francisco Bay Area. The Calaveras Dam Replacement Project is the largest project in the program, $810 million. In the future, if the city decides that they want to expand the capacity of the reservoir, we could actually raise the new dam about a, another 150 feet, which would essentially quadruple the size of the reservoir. We would have nearly a 400,000 acre foot reservoir. The design uh, was conceived such that that could be done without having to uh, deconstruct the existing dam uh, prior to the raise in the future.